We look at the life of Abraham and Sarah. You know, God had called Abraham because he had chosen him as the father of many nations. He had a very high call and he called him as a family. And God said that he would give him generation, seed, as the stars of the heaven, the sand of the shore. Now, he had a very great blessing before him, but, you know, there was a time that he had to go through, a time of being processed, a time of being, you know, waiting. But right then, you know, there comes a counsel from his wife, who is Sarah. I don't know how she got it. Probably that was the practice of those days that when a family, a husband and wife didn't have children, then, you know, they get the maids and, and have children through the maids. And maybe that was the, the counsel of the society. So someone or, or the society had counseled Sarah and, and put that thing in her mind. But God had clearly told Abraham that he was going to give him a seed, a generation that would literally supersede every other nation. And, and God even had told that Abraham's family would be a blessing to so many other families. And here we see Sarah takes this thing to counsel Abraham. I really don't know how many days she did it and in what ways and means and forms she tried to convince Abraham. But finally Abraham yielded to her counsel and took Hagar, the maidservant of Sarah, and the result was Ishmael. Now, that was not God's perfect plan for Abraham. And we know later on, God gives Abraham his own son through Sarah when he was 100 years old. Isaac was born. But the scripture says that when Isaac was growing up, there were conflict between, there was conflict often between Ishmael and Isaac till, you know, God had to intervene and, and Sarah again counseled Abraham to send away Hagar, her maidservant, and her son Ishmael. So throughout the Bible, counsel, but it's not all counsel that is right. 